Sunday night, about two o'clock. How say I? Happy me kutru. Now I'm so happy me looking. Now all kata abo arsa idea. Lightning all kata. Now me looking ya all bilawa ikaw dikam inside finish. Now all man me sleep inside tuwain ya. Ito bilawa ikaw finish na yung kerap. That's all. Aklum bilawa out. How say I all ban same finish na all stop. Now all kam kukum house na. Aklum bilawa escape. Let's stop. Now plant it all in day. Me eat. Me put my blanket, blanket, lay it for me. Me carry my blanket. Stop. Now we stand up. Stop now. Blanket and fire now. I'm cooking me now. Me not stop. Life for me and go finish. Me go away. Me stop away. Me not think this lah. Life go finish. This is not one, this is not two, this is talking about, this is talking about daily for human lives and uh, it is not only men but it includes uh, women and children and they actually said that it was a, they said it was a bomb. We said that it is a hand grenade. This is a lot of people who are still in the house and who are still in the house and who are still in the house. Plan di lain bini dia lori selap, mungkin itu, mungkin itu yang payah lori selap. Em kurus tu payah ini sahij. Tapi soalnya mungkin semua teri sini pelakai tu nama kerama pun nampak tu setiap. Juga tapi soalnya sila pelakai tu nama teri tu payah kisim. Em lig lig mungkin nama kote je ada bimam itu rumah itu harus sahij. Oke, misi di bulu ya, tak suruh mikir api kam, misi nap, gan, oli bosen, putih itu cilok ya. Nah, oli begi bosen ya, suruh miti ni, misi di pintai pintai selokan ya, miti ni memsan ya, miti ni bosen ya, naga tos, milu kim lo, mouse bulu five ya, suruh tos ya, ah suruh god, mii ko insan lo berua ya, mii tukar sem time. Tos ya ikut dan lo katanya ya ikut sim, okay? Mi subi mad lo here, mi ikut sim, mi funda, mi ikut sim, mi ikut dan lo katanya belum mi, mi kata. Nampi mi ikut setiap lo apa fikir ni belum mi harus subi mula. Entah sol, mi megi mula. Yeah, tu pada mama fikir ni yang dah lo here dah, yang mesti dah lo here. Mi arem di sela pada blokan mikira. Kliman, klimpik, kagaru, kadim panana, kadim diway, lebelum barat, klina bukida, kamu di sasta kamu. Ino na wana sambil bayu lusi. Di seluruh muka tu wana mah belas lo faide, saya kamu boros. Dan saya pikir pada santin nunggu di kamp agam sihiran lo fitbol ya. We call it tribal fight, but for me, for me it's like small scale war. It has the same damage to the area as as any war in any other countries. They burn the house, the first thing, and then the second thing, they chop all the trees, the bananas, the food gardens. The cash crop plants like coffee, bananas, everything. They destroy water supplies, even they burn down schools, they burn down churches, even the clinics. When they engage in battle and they're shooting guns out and people dying, they aim for total destruction. Anything that they can destroy, total destruction is their aim. Obviously, there's a you know, big loss of life, 
Um, there's a lot of uh, properties that are damaged. Um, there's displacement of hundreds to thousands of people from the villages that are at conflict uh, or the tribes that are at conflict. It has a major impact on, um, on communities up in the islands. I think one of the big factors in modern day PNG is there is a push for access to more resources, especially up in the highlands where the bulk of PNG's 8 million people live. When you have uh, millions of Papua New Guineans living in one part of PNG, having less access to land, less access to agricultural land, less access to, to water. These are triggers for, for conflict. People would resort to tribal fighting as a way of ending a conflict or grievance between individuals or between groups. And usually after fighting, people will resort to establishing some kind of peace. The common expression is you pay compensation. Compensation is a ceremony. It's a way of exchanging things just to reestablish the good relationship. After peace, like it's two, three year peace, a fight flares up, it goes back again. So if you observe the whole event, the social activity of this community for about 20 years, two decades or three, you will find that it can be interpreted as a cycle. People just go around, peace, war, peace, war, peace, war. So the scenario now is, when conflict happens, there's no time for communication. There's no talking at all. Conflict happens, extreme violence, confrontation. Yeah? And when you think that violence is over, it prolongs. When you have a break in violence, it's because people are waiting for arms supplies, reinforcement, money, someone to recover, something is happening. Then when the opportunity comes, they're striking again. Somebody's getting murdered here, there, must be everywhere. Yeah? So really there's that cycle of violence that keeps on going. When we have bows and arrows, only one dead and then compensation finish. Now, 10, 15, whole tribe nearly down now. And we are losing this generation of young people now in the tribal country, just shooting them. Now they are shooting pastors. Before, they fear shooting the pastors because they preach the word of God. Now they don't care, they shoot pastors. Through the past 15 years, I'm seeing influx of gun is very serious. And if we continue this phase, I think our society will be not the same. We're seriously saying that. The use of uh, guns for, for tribal fighting, for custom work, for intimidation in the highlands is prevalent. In fact, it's out of control. Um, it's a serious concern because um, that's where 80% of the population of Papua New Guinea live up uh, in the highlands. We know for a fact that every tribal fight, guns are used. Every roadblock, guns are used. Every murder, guns are used. And we know that during elections, guns are used to intimidate, to harass, or even to murder uh, opposing people. And uh, we are very, very concerned. Before, all of us used to burn ra. No, tro, chudim ko kam da so plani mani no sabende. Because I'm using lo, burn ra na spia. And now white man come ya, only karam, masin gan, sword gan, pisho, bush knife. Ola kam na mal kara pa pay dia. I'm nara kan tru mi plani pin sabel hela. The first time I come to this last century because this is a factory, you mean no kind of hell. Masikan only come one and a half million, so I only pump this car in gram. Time me prepared, I go long, go east up on Bushio, go east up along one of the location and have, and no what you will, and me press. 
Women and children are very, very, very badly affected. They have not uh, involved in this uh, sort of fighting. It's not of the doing, but they have been unnecessarily uh, go through a lot of uh, unnecessary pressures and a lot of problems. They have been made to um, run and go to live in other places where they're not even used to. Children, they miss out on education. They miss out on good uh, food, good rest in houses. And uh, women are put under a lot of pressure because uh, they have to take care of the kids. Because the men are fighting, they have to feed the kids somehow. Which way they find food, they have to find it. They have to uh, clothe, they have to take care of the little babies. And they've uh, been put under a lot of stress. Some time, we have to go to all months. We have to kill them all. Some of them, some of them, we have to go to the hospital. 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 I was able to get a lot of money. I was able to get a lot of money. I was able to get a lot of money. It's very hard in here. People live with fear when they are fighting. When they are fighting, sexual violence, rape increases. Because the enemies are attacking the women when they go back to the garden to look for food. When they go there, the enemies come and attack them, hold them, kidnap them, and rape them. Because the enemies, like, they don't care. So they will still, no matter you go, you a woman, or you a small girl, or you a mother, they will still attack you. In the hospital here we see every day uh, victims of tribal fights and um, yeah, a bit depending on the, the day, sometimes it's just small cuts um, and other days uh, people are being chopped to death that they actually already arrived death in the hospital or sometimes nearly death and they more or less die on the spot and sometimes uh, yeah, still savable and then we can actually make a difference. We have about a month ago, two children, one seven, the other five, and they were just both shot because, yeah, that's going to be the enemies of the, of the upcoming 10 years. So uh, it seems to involve everyone. We have nurses in the hospital who have nothing to do with the tribal fight, but because they live in the middle, their houses are being burned down. So I think it involves the whole society and uh, older people from young until old. When you have tribal warfare in a, in a province or in a certain town, uh, you will most likely not have a functioning education system and a functioning health system. 
So it has always, uh, tribal warfare has, always, has also had, a, had an effect on, on delivery of basic government services. There are places where there are no functioning hospitals and schools simply because people are always fighting each other. This facility is under the Imbungu LG. It saves eight to 9,000 total population. We provide services like minor surgery, admissions. We do outpatients. We do mobile clinics, deliveries, and a lot of services we provided here. This facility has been closed for some time after the fighting. What happened was that uh, during the fighting, the opponent side, they came in directly and they destroyed all the facility here, the buildings, the equipment, the medicines that we have. Even the officer, they changed him, so he's out. So we can't really even, I mean, the, as an advisor, I, I can't even help. A lot has been damaged. I don't have money to even rebuild or put a structure again. I mean, do maintenance and all this. So it's helpless now. You see the road condition is very, very terrible for the cars to travel in, buses. So no choice. They need to take a walk, either by, by bus tracking or along the road. In my area, we were warned not to treat the other casualty of both, uh, both parties because if we do, uh, they'll come after us. If we treat the other, uh, the other side, then the, those ones will come again and they will question us, why did you help him? Or why did you help her? Or so on. Because they want uh, the, the other enemy to die. The lives of the health workers working out there, we are in a risk, but I'm not so whether this will continue or this will end. You see in this area, large displacement, uh, destruction of uh, property, private property. Uh, people are losing uh, access to, to the healthcare. Children are losing access to, uh, to, the, to the schools. Uh, they bring, when they, uh, when they flee, they, they've normally been, uh, been hosted by, by, by the relatives or, or, or neighbors. And uh, this brings additional, additional problems to the, to the host families also. Travelers, uh, Tubla Papa, Papa and Mama one time, little brother all sleep in his lap, sleep in his land. Now my brother, they didn't block him and up again. Now my brother sleep in his house. All cooking mouse time, my brother come and up and come, cause up there. Hey, my brother plant the line sleep so hey mouse blow all peak. My brother come sleep. My brother no feel all right as well. Travel in no go down. Or some na. My blood just goes up and sleep. My blood like tinted to make some blood something I'm mad. My blood stopped us. See, it is unfortunate that a lot of the tribes in modern day PNG do not see, you know, uh, the land court, for example, or even the court system, you know, um, as an avenue in which they can be uh, able to address some of their grievances over land custody. People don't, don't know where to uh, raise their complaints. They go through the mediation. And when they go through mediation at the village level, people take sides. And where people are not happy with the outcome of the, the mediation, they, started, uh, they start taking actions. And, and that's how it starts off. If we continue to live like that for the next five, ten years, we will hear that one clan will wipe another clan with arms. And that will happen. Only we have good law and order system in place in Hela. And then I think the fighting will stop. If we don't have a law and order system in place in Hela, I think then it will. Because now people are don't listen to the police. Police, they are saying, you have gun, I have gun. Who are you? Possession of firearms is widespread. It's quite difficult to deal with it. And it needs a extended sort of operation to retrieve firearms, meaning you have to have enough resources to cover the whole area. We realize that if, uh, if, uh, if there is a conflict and the police does not deal with it, then obviously the person, the victim, tries to retaliate. And that's where conflicts escalate, because the families get involved 
and eventually the entire tribes gets involved. And so I think the best uh, uh, thing is to have uh, uh, police re supported. If the government uh, does support them well, I don't think it will escalate to an extent uh, that will uh, that will claim lives and cause such massive unwanted destruction. We provide assistance to the direct victims, meaning that we provide, we distribute essential household kits to the affected uh, families. We try to respond as soon as possible because we know that the most difficult period is, is right after displacements. Then we try to rehabilitate the healthcare facilities that have been damaged during the tribal fight. And we also support uh, National Society, PNG Red Cross uh, National Society, by providing technical support, trainings, and also sometimes funds when they, they respond to the, to the tribal fights. And uh, we do also rehabilitation of infrastructure, damaged infrastructure during a tribal fight, like water supply, sanitation. We also have a very useful tool called the Drama Show, which is performed by the professional actors. They uh, imitate the situation which provokes the conflict. They do it in front of a big audience, sometimes we do it at the marketplace, and then we, at a certain point we stop and we ask people, so what, what is wrong in here? And then people are quite actively involved in this. It makes, uh, it makes people understand that sometimes one simple, uh, one simple step may, may, prevent, uh, may prevent a big fight to happen and it may prevent hundreds of people displaced and uh, hundreds of houses uh, destroy, destroyed. And it's a very easy way to understand and to pass our message, not to target women and children, not to target civil infrastructure, the healthcare facilities and schools. Before we start our last time, we had to cut it, 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 now we start our right. Now we run all the fight, I will be able to do it. 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 Once I am done, I will be able to do it. 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 Different actors in communities have roles they are playing but they are all isolated. It's not being coordinated. The health people can do trauma healing. The police can do their job. Education do, can, education divisions, the schools can do peace education. The pastors can preach about peace. So many other things can be done. If all of this can be coordinated, hell, can change. I think it's very important to, uh, to provide good support to the educational sector. Peacemakers, different, different programs, different tools, different structures that, that will help people to find ways without fighting, uh, to, to solve the problem without fighting, without, without the war. As I travel stuff yet, so, I don't go out and make a walking mouse or a walking garden or make a wall or something like that. I don't stop and go out and be a boom, a cigar, one bell, or this is what I mean by me. 